Since the release of AFL 23 just over a month ago, many people in the community have made so many amazingly built stadiums that some of them have just proven to be so accurate. So that's what exactly what we're looking for in today's video. These are the most accurately built stadiums in AFL 23 so far. Let's go. Starting off with this build of the current day Waverley Park, this one here has got all the features that you'd see at this demolished ground today. And yes, as you probably just saw, I have got the credits of the people that actually made this stadium. So I, I won't take the credit for myself, it'd just be wrong to. But anyway, continuing on back to the stadium. The demolished grandstand looks absolutely magnificent. They really got that right. The houses, of course, that surrounds Waverley Park. That's probably the biggest feature of this ground. That's probably what stands out most in my opinion, actually. And I guess also the trees that surround the ground as well. That's in front of the houses. Like... It kind of looks like they're all in the right spot. I don't know why I think that. It's not like I'm counting all the trees and stuff. But overall, I absolutely love this design of the current day Waverley Park. North Hobart Oval down in Tasmania. Honestly, I can't believe how beautiful this ground turned out. And to get built in this game is unbelievable. I, I have a lot of respect for the person that made this. Um, but obviously, I think it's the grandstands that stand out the most for this. You've got the stand that sits right behind the goals. I don't think I'm going to pronounce this right. But if I get it wrong, I'm just really poor but I think it's called the Hori Gorringe stand that sits behind the goals. Um, they've now that design with the top of the stand I believe. The scoreboard's in the right spot. This stand over the north side as well looks great and the whole ground just looks great overall. Now this one here is probably my favourite in the game right now. VFL Park from the early 70s to late 1990s. Like I'm just stunned of how this turned out, how accurately built this stadium is. And also not to mention how things are exactly in the right spot. You've got the scoreboard, the seat colours, that's probably the bigger one of this I'd say because you know to get every single seat colour right would take, oh you'd probably say about two, three hours to do that. Even in the triple tier stand of Waverley they've got that barrier walled seating and that really stands out as well. And I'll quickly get a quick comparison shot here of these two from the one in the game and in the 90s. Just, I don't think that's gonna replace my favorite on this list so far. And comment down below as well, which one is your favorite and which one you think is the most accurately built? Comment down below. Now this next one has the most downloads in this game and honestly, I can understand why. 1,500 downloads of Amy Stadium aka Football Park, which is such an unbelievable achievement for this user who made this. Like, there's just not a single thing wrong with this build, but it's it's like Waverly. This is probably my second favourite to be fair, but they've included the double tier stand and they've also got that triple tier northern stand behind the goals. The stand on the east side that just goes around all the ground and I think it's called the members stand if I wasn't mistaken. But in my opinion, it's probably the stand you'll see most because of the camera that they have there at the start of every game. Um, well, back then when Amy Stadium was obviously a venue, but it's probably the stand you'd see the most at the member stand. And I have mentioned a couple times about this as well, but the light towers as well, that obviously would stand out the most. They've got the exact light towers for these stadiums and they do such a good job for this. And honestly, the football park one is very, very good. Former AFL venue in New Zealand, Sky Stadium Wellington. Probably one of the last stadiums you would have thought would appear on this list, but honestly, the seat colours, in my opinion, is the one that stands out the most because it's just a stadium full of yellow seats and, well, you've got that small double tier stand at the top of the ground and the waterfront view of the ground has also been included to give it the, the actual realistic look to what it has in real life. Here's another comparison shot looking above the ocean at the stadium. Such an impressive build, really. I guess I could include the lights as well. It's not fully the same, but it still looks amazing. Next up, this one, Morley, for the Western Australians. The 1990s look of the Wacker. Western Australian Cricket Association. What a name for a venue. But straight away, I was just blown away from the colour scheme of the seating. Like, And the six light towers as well also goes down really well. And the mix of old and new styles of this ground as well. This, the new single and double tier stands. Outside the ground you can also see the road. The city view in the background because I'm pretty sure the wacky is right in the heart of Perth. But from what I said before, the mix of old and new is my favorite part of this build. And look, hats off to Oscar Otto for building this. The Jason in the 70s. Have a look at this. The look at the MCG where there was literally no light towers back then. The classic look at the time, the fourth electronic video screen in the world 
And I reckon the 1970 look for the MCG was probably the most mixed and weirdly designed time that this venue ever was. And looking at these comparison photos, they've done a cracking job to get this as accurate as it is because it wouldn't be easy to build something like this because it's so misshaped and yeah. But arguably my favourite part about this is the very old small second tier stand with the slim roof. And also on screen right now, I've got that really old vintage stand, which I couldn't exactly find the name of what it was, but that is what I call a mix of old and new in the 70s. And also that one blue seated grandstand, which really stood out as well, I thought. And just the rest of the white around the ground. But there was another thing that I also loved about this grand, and that was the grandstands that just go up a tier and then behind it, there's literally no walls, no roofs. It's just a massive view of the Melbourne city. That was unbelievable, really. No back walls or roofs, it was arguably the cherry on top. Now, Brighton Homes Arena in Springfield. Don't. Amazing little venue in Queensland too, by the way. And it sure is in AFL 23 as well. The grandstands and the seating all in the right place. The light towers that look so much similar to Monica Oval. They're also there as well. And also the large scoreboard behind the goals. And I'm glad the car park next to the little grandstand on the wing are there too. And I guess it doesn't stand out the most, but it adds more little realistic features to the ground. And the colours of the seats are really nice as well, especially the one that sits right behind the goals. Now, probably a controversial one, and I don't know if I'm being biased or not just because I'm a Cats fan, but seriously, it was just too good to not include on this list. And this is Cadenia Park in 2007. Now, I'm not too familiar with the old builds and designs of Cadenia Park back then, but just looking at some photos back in the day, how it used to look was really good. And seeing the rebuild of this ground with the, the blue and white mix of seating and it was just the greatest part of this ground, really. And yes, no light towers were at this venue at the time, and the Ford stand with the seating was still there, and the building that was behind it, and I still don't know what it was, but I'm pretty sure it was a function room. Probably wrong on that, but anyway, continuing on. Also, the Gary Ablett Terrace was still there, along with the original player stand, and also the entrance into the ground has an appearance in this also. Subiaco Oval also makes an appearance in this video, so there you go Dockers and Eagles fans with this superb build of your former home venue, but even if you're not a fan of the two sides, still have a look at this build. Starting with the outside of the ground, we're going to start from the outside for once, but including the road that goes past the ground, which none of the other grounds have actually had so far, other than the Wacker. The huge scoreboard as well on the same end, or as it's morally known as the NAB stand. Um, the seats match as the ones did in real life back in the day. The little scoreboard in the double tier stand is here too, and the triple tier stand looks so cool in the game and that if you have a set shot, you'll literally see it when you're kicking a goal. And our last stadium of the video, we have a Sandful ground actually, and I guess it's also seen a couple of AFL preseason games and AFLW games, and this is Unley Oval in South Australia. Standing out most with this build would have to be the background that included the trees that surrounds the ground, the two old and modern grandstands, which is always a nice touch for these builds. The lights look the same, the new scoreboard in the pocket as well, as well as the gate entrance behind it looks really nice, and along with a function room behind the goals. But anyway guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading more content in the future. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you in the next one. See you.